we started we started last week sunday we started talking and i said that for the next four months the teaching will be on this in the second service in the first service uh we are we are going to be working on your movement to the next level now mama took us in the first service today uh she was preaching powerfully i was preaching at the level church powerfully hallelujah and uh, we had the same topic but different locations amen and uh, it was powerful i believe it was powerful here as well we were taught the power of what strong will determination uh, you are looking as if we were not in church is the word the same word you know and i said whenever the devil is trying to use people that are familiar to discourage you the devil is throwing stones so that to make you discouraged easily so when people around you are the ones attacking you don't be discouraged it's a strategy of the devil to make you frustrated did you get it you must keep moving on and uh, we also saw the second point as well it's the same message we preach you are, you are, the spirit of god is one hallelujah the same message we preach we also saw that when you don't give up the devil too will not give up the devil will steer up more people so more people were stirred up and they were throwing stones of discouragement at david to make sure he he fails but david didn't fail he decided to move on and we saw the third point again hallelujah oh you don't know that we are we are one in the spirit we study together hallelujah uh uh, I always say, with the, the person that should carry the anointing of God's servant is God's servant's wife. Because we stay in the same house. Except if the servant of God's wife is not connecting. And we saw that whenever the devil wants to discourage you, he makes the problem. He uses Goliath to want to threaten you. And the funny part of it is that Goliath will only be brought down by an ordinary stone. That's why you must be determined this year. As a child of God, be determined that you will go to the next level. Say, I'm going to the next level. So, on our school this morning, you know, Understanding Temptation Part 2, get your jotters ready, open them wide, and open your heart. I told us last week's Sunday, let me just do a summary of last week's Sunday's message, that temptation is what I told us, that temptation is enticement, that temptation is when the devil decides to lure you, you know, when the devil decides to beautify something in order to attract you into it. And I told you that whenever you are facing temptation, that the object of temptation will look like the best. It will look as if, if you don't do it, you will lose. And I told us last week, Sunday, that see, every single time you fall into temptation, you fall out of a peculiar grace of God. Because, hear me, anytime the devil sees that God is bringing a, a, a promotion your way, he sets up temptation in order to make you miss it. So let's continue this morning. Understanding temptation part two, we have a question that we are going to answer. Who is behind temptation? Who is behind temptation? Our anchor scripture, James chapter 1 and verse 13. James chapter 1 and verse 13. Once they put it on screen, we always stand up to read. That's the first scripture we are reading as I want to preach. Let's be on our feet after the let's be on our feet, everybody. Let's be on our feet. Thank you that your legs are working well. God bless you. Use those legs now. Be on your feet. Some people cannot stand at all. God bless you. You know, somebody came to see me and I tried to offer the person a seat. He says, sir, if I sit down, standing up is a problem. So let me stand. Ah. Because he said, my legs are no longer working. I say, may your legs not stop working. Okay, English leg bomb me more. Sorry. Okay, I understand now. <laughs> After the count of three, can we read together? One, two, and three. Let's go. Let no man say, when he is tempted... I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil. Neither tempted he any man. Now I want you to look at these scriptures clearly. Because so many people have been taught to believe that when they are facing hard times, it is God that is tempting them. And you alone don't you won't. Alone think of Brook Dani Woni. 
especially people of the other religion we say they even call it adonwo do so la adonwo ti e koja god is not the one tempting you and look at it clearly for god cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man so let's look at the source okay, please be seated god bless you i know i have elderly people here let's look at the source of temptation now, if God is not the one tempting you, where does temptation come from? Now, this scripture should give us a clarity. You know what I want to establish in your heart this morning is this. Yes, God is not the tempter, but God knows when you are being tempted. The reason is this. Every single time God wants to bless you, every single time God wants to bring you into a new level, we have an enemy that is called the devil. According to 1 Peter 5, 8. The Bible says he roars about like a lion lion looking for whom to devour. You know what he will do? He will go to seek God's permission. Now he will come in, force of accus- in form of accusation. To say, Lord, that's your daughter. Lord, that's your son. It's not qualified. Anyhow, yeah. Uh -uh. is he asking for a child is he asking for marriage whatsoever the lord the devil continue to ask and he will seek for permission that's the source of temptation so god permits the devil why why does god permit the devil the lord god permits the devil so that you can prove your love for him and shame the devil do you understand now? He permits the devil so that you can prove your love. That, okay, okay, let's see. Devil, you are permitted to go. You are permitted to go. But God has confidence in you for one reason. He believes that you won't disappoint him. He believes that the devil will be disgraced. But most times, several children of God, we fall the hands of God. When we fall into the hands of temptation. Let's look at more scriptures. I will just show you one or two more. To show you that God is not the tempter. Matthew chapter 7 from 9 to verse 11. God is not the one behind temptation. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 9 to verse 11. God is not behind temptation. Look at this. He said, of what man is there of you? Whom if his son ask bread will give him a stone. Can you see? Who, who, who among you? Who among you? We say, okay, my son is asking for bread. Now come and take stone. Show me the next verse of what, of what man. Or if he asks for fish and will give him serpent. It's not possible. He said, no man can do that. Next verse. Now he said, if you then, being evil, know how to good give good gift unto your children, how much more shall your father, which is in heaven, Give you good things, good, give good things to them that ask for it. So God is not the tempter. Any child of God that is going through something and he's saying, ah, God is tempting me, oh, God is tempting me, oh, ah, listen, that person is getting it wrong. God is not the tempter. I wrote here, I often hear a lot of believers say God is tempting them with one difficult situation or the other. This is not true because the Bible clearly says God does not tempt his children. Now, this is why you as a child, sorry, this is why you should arise in the place of prayer. As a child of God, this is why you should understand the act of warfare. And when you notice anything that is contrary, you pray. You don't say, ah, who knows? Maybe that exam that I failed, God is tempting me. Somebody said, God is tempting me with that exam that I failed to see whether I'm going to, whether I'm going to backslide. It's not God. Some things are demonic, especially if it is negative. And that's why you must understand the act of warfare. If things are not going in line with what you planned, you pray. If things are not going in line with what you planned, you pray. Now listen to this reading. The day God gave me an encounter from my experience, from the experience of Job, and what he was expected to do, I discovered that, listen, the level of my victory over the devil in life will be determined by the, my, by the level of my understanding of whom I am in Christ. I will explain. 
Now, from the encounter of Job, you know when the devil came to God and said, hey, Job, Job, and God said, okay, you can go. God did not expect that Job will fall. God did not expect that the devil would get there and, kill, and succeed to kill Job's children. Now, there was an existing relationship between God and Job. The Bible says he was the holiest man on earth, the most prosperous man on earth. And if you look at, even in their days, look up, in their own days, you will see that even when the angel wanted to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, did Abraham not bargain? Answer me now. He bargained. Abraham was at the entrance. He was able to know that these men are not ordinary men. When the devil was to come, God expected that Job should know certain things. But Job didn't know. So many Christians today are suffering because of one thing. We don't have the understanding of who we are in Christ. So, in our teaching on temptation today, I'm going to show you this. I want you to make, I want to make you understand if the, the, who you are. I will show you four things that you are in Christ. Four truths that you must know about yourself. Because if you don't know who you are in a country, they will just ride you. If you don't know who you are, you should know who you are. The first time I was privileged to travel out of the country, my host told me that, Pastor, since you are not a citizen of this country, you must always, anytime we are going out, your international passport with your visa on it must always be in your pocket. I said, eh. He said, that's how we live here to those who don't have permit to live here. He said, or oh, else you'll be shocked that you go to the market and from the market you'll be deported. You won't be telling uh, paper, me one No, 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 no. So throughout my stay in that country, my document was, so I remember there was this particular day, we got to a particular one of the, uh, they took me to one of their markets in the local area. They have local area too. And when we got there, my host asked me, Pastor, did you put your, is your passport with you? I said, yes. He said, because I can see immigration officers are around. Thinking that they will stop me to say, who are you? But I was shocked. The only one that stopped me said, stop please. I love your dress. Can I buy it? Then my whole said, that's what they do here. When they see a good Nigerian dress on, on you, they will just give you money and you quickly change and give them. But that's not the decision for this money. So, who did I discover that I am in Christ? Now, this understanding changed my mentality completely. And I want you to understand this too. Who did I discover that I am in Christ? So that you too can know who you are in Christ. Listen, this is what I discovered. I discovered that my being born again, number one, made me a son of God. My being born again, that's the first understanding I had that changed my mindset. I am not a slave. Let me tell your neighbor, you are not a slave of God. I didn't hear you now. Look at John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever receiveth him shall, what? shall be saved. Shall be saved. Except a man be born again. He cannot. There is no. The moment you become born again. Listen. You have become a son. And you should understand. There is a way they treat son. There is a way a son relates at home. Is different from the way a slave relates at home. I'm here. Concentrate. Leave at me alone. Look at me. Yeah. I see. There are, there are ways. I will explain it. You know. Look up. We used to have, before, before we sent her back, we used to have a girl in her house. Now, this is mod modern day slavery. But in those days, you, you own slave like property. Tobareru, big batin or ramotoni. Tobareru, big batin or ra eru. Unoshimans, okay, and to leru, lu leru. Now, you will notice that slaves don't stay where children stay because they don't have the same right. Now, but this one, we didn't buy her. We employed her to work in her house as a house, as a maid. I noticed that when she first came, when we all are in the sitting room, sitting on our chair, watching TV, you know, this little girl will come into the room and sit at a corner on the floor. Our last year, we are the ones that will now ask her, Grace, Kilo Didn't 
Joke is the chair. When she now comes to the chair, she will sit at the edge of the chair and she will sit down like somebody that is alert. Like somebody that is careful. While you see my own children, we sit down and everybody's. Most children of God, the reason why they believe that God can be tempting them with what is bad is because we don't understand our position. You are not a slave. You are a son. We like to take my own biological child and say, okay, you know what? Let me test my son with what is bad. Let me tie him with a rope and see. Let me deprive him of breakfast and lunch and see. My understanding of who I am, that I am a son in the body of Christ, changed my mind. Changed my mindset. Say after me, I am a son of God. I wrote here, I am connected to him. He is my father. I am not a slave. He has plans for me the way a responsible father has plans for his child. He has plans the way a responsible father has plans. My children doesn't need to bother about their breakfast. It's not their, it's not their, it's not their own problem. It's my problem. Now, it is me and my wife will be thinking of, okay, in the night, kino ma jela rola, okay, kino ma jelosan, kino ma jenrole. It's none of their business. Yes, we can tell them to evolve in the cooking, but in the planning, they don't have choice. Understand that the moment you are born again, you are a son of God. God has plans for you. Look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. He says, for I know the thought that I think towards you, seeth the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you what? An expected end. Yeah, God, Abbasanda. To give an expected end. If you are born again with me and you are here in church, shout aloud, I am a son of God. I am a son of God. Therefore, exhibit that confidence of a son. I'm blessed by the grace of God with three biological children, several spiritual children. Now, if you are trusting God for fruit of the womb, the Lord will bless you too. But do you know that I relate with each one of them in their own peculiar ways? And I'm not judging A by the way I relate with B. We all are the same children of God. We, he may not relate with us in the same way, but he loves us all. Yes, you may, you may be different in some characters, but he still loves you as your father. Ask them, when I want to wake the three of them, I wake them up in different ways. If I'm to wake the firstborn, we know that she likes sleep. She likes sleep to the point that even when we wanted to give back to her, she didn't agree to come. The doctors tried and tried and tried and tried. She didn't come. So they decided to operate the mom. When they operated the mom, they brought her out. She was still sleeping. We were at the entrance of the theater. We started hearing somebody spanking somebody. So when the doctor came out, I said, what happened? He said, do you believe, pastor, this girl was sleeping in the womb. That's why we had to operate your wife. We brought her out again. She was still sleeping. That's why I had to spank her to wake up. So even up till this morning, if I want to wake her up, any ola, any ola, I will now drag her, stand up, or else she will go back. But if I stand up from the bed of our bedroom, second boy is already awake. Ah, ti de room eh. Ah, ti ti soro. Pe mo di de la son otiji. Ah, she she ma beri. She wo kin soon. But they are still my children. But the third one, you wake him, you wake him, you carry him, you still be stretching in your arms for the second round. You are not on the bed, you are in my hand. But still they are my children. Whether you pray loud or you pray low, you are God's son. God will not judge you by other people's lifestyle. He knows you for you. He relates with you because of who you are. I won't be saying, Eniola, Eniola, you are not serious. You're not serious. That is the way she's wired. She doesn't struggle to sleep. That's the way she's wired. I won't be saying, Oi, oi, is something wrong with you? Go and sleep. That's the way she's wired. They are all my children. Who are you? Say, I'm a son of God. He loves you for who you are. 
That's why I begin to understand that he loves you. God loves you. Stop thinking that he loves somebody more than you. It's a lie. If somebody says God loves somebody more than you, he run me. That one loves sleep more than the other. The son said they should change their name from my, from my name. They are my children. See, I hear now. So once you have this understanding, and we have seen that scripture that can, we, whose father, whose father we, the son asked for a bread, and the father will now say, come and take stone. No. If you ask for bread, he gives you bread. Even if he's not giving you now, he knows the reason why. But you are still his son. You know, when I had this understanding, it made me to understand that, listen, when it looks as if something is becoming negative, this cannot be God. God will not test his children with the negative. Can you just imagine for me and my wife to say, okay, let us agree. You know what we are going to do? You know what? Well, let's test these children. Ah! God is not behind evil. Is somebody hearing me? God is not behind evil. Don't let anybody preach to you that ah, you let away your love in there with me. It's a lie. Whenever you see any negative thing happen, I've taught you here. I think was it three Sundays ago? No, it was a Wednesday. I said it could be number one out of your spiritual carelessness. Because he himself said, Watch and pray. He won't do the watching for you. He won't do the praying for you. When he sees that something is about to happen, he will show you the signal. Yes, I love my children. They are my children. But I can't go to university to write the exams for them. There are some things God cannot do for you. Now, will I get to listen to now and say, no, no, don't worry. Don't worry, I will, sit, I, will sit, I will sit down for that exam. They will send me out. In fact, the first time I had that understanding was when we went for our registration. We got to Lee City Senate. We sat down. She sat, they, they sat at the reception chairs. Uh, the whole family went together because it's the first time we, a, a, uh, we were be having somebody going to the university from our family. So every one of us, including Uriola, we went together. We are the Senate. So I took her document and went to sit in front of the admin officer. The name, I said her name is Eniola Falavi. He said, sir, are you the one that gained admission? I said, no. He said, then who are you? I said, I'm my father. He said, sir, we're not in secondary school. Let her defend her admission. Excuse me. Come and sit down. And I stood up at the, at the end of discussion. I asked, well, there are some exams you will face in life that God will not face for you. So that's why it is your responsibility to be watchful. If you are thinking that, hey, hey, my father will not give me soon if I ask for bread. Yes. But when the devil is about attacking, my, what your father will do is to show you, Nkokombo, something is about to happen. My daughter, my son, you better pray. My son, my daughter, you better watch. My son, my daughter, you better take this step. But most times, the devil gets the Christian when the Christian is spiritually what? Careless. Am I communicating? And you see, the devil is always rising, riding on people's ignorance. Riding on people's ignorance. Riding on people's ignorance in order to rob them. That's why you must always go for knowledge. I'm a son of God. The third thing that makes the devil to succeed to attack children of God is when he throws a little sin and you grab it. To bash sin when she. Defense set to open. But apart from that, listen. Apart from that, you are God's son. God is a responsible father. He has plans for you. He will not tempt you with evil. 
Let's go to the second discovery I, I, I made. I also discovered, number two, I discovered that in Christ Jesus, I have the right to ask for things according to his will. This one to help me. I discovered that in Christ Jesus, I have the right to ask for things according to his will. Let me touch that, brother. Let him, let him open his eyes. Yes, open your eyes. Look at him. I'm here. Number two discovery. I discovered that in Christ Jesus, I have the right to ask for things according to his will. Now, what right do you have? Not to ask for things, though, but to ask for things according to his will. God will only give you what you ask him that is in accordance to his will. How do we know? Show that in scriptures. 1 John chapter 5, 13 to 15. 1 John chapter 5. From verse 13 to verse 15. It says, These things, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of Jesus, the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Move on. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. Follow this reading. That what? That if we ask for anything, how? According to his will. What will happen? He heareth us. If we ask for anything, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. But it must be what? According to his will. Now, that was what pushed me to be reading Bible. I want to know the will of God. I want to know the will of God. I want to know the will of God so that I can, so that I can ask for things that are pertaining in accordance to his will. My children know that if they present their request to me and the request is something that I should do, I do. But if it's a request that is not something for me to do. Now, for instance, she wanted to write an exam. She got there. She discovered that I have not paid certain amount. She came back home and told me, Daddy, I didn't find my name. I didn't find my name. Uh, I didn't find my name on our portal. They, discovered, they have not given me accreditation to do exam. Daddy, they said, we need, we need to just pay uh, 5000 extra. I said, okay. I, I, gave him, I gave her transfer. Listen, that's my responsibility. Then she now came later. Hey, Daddy, I don't know. Can you do a uh, data of 2000 now for me? I didn't answer. I saw you watching film, film, film all the time on the internet. You announced that you, I should use my money for you to watch movie. But this. Daddy, please now. I didn't answer. Why did I answer the first one? And didn't answer the second one? That's the same thing with God. Some of you are praying the prayer points that you yourself know that God cannot answer you. submit application Mrs. Central Bank. Oh, she accounting. Ma, that's the truth. Oluwa, we document him to join. We don't want to run it. She me do talk. We are pastors. Our language, prayer request. God will not answer the prayer that is not in accordance to his will. Or else, he won't answer you. Some women, they don't have good character at home. They talk there to their husband anyhow, and you are saying, Ulua, for what talk can't call me? Go fell on me, go saw me the kuri, go swan yere. Ulua for what talk, Ulua for what talk, Ulua for what talk, for what talk, for what talk, for what talk, for what talk. Uba for, kuba lulusi. God wants her because you have not done according to his will. 
If you read First Peter chapter 3, it talks about Sarah, the way she treated her husband. He said, if you treat your husband like this, they will come to the Lord, even without you preaching to them. You didn't read. You are about sitting for exam. Everybody is reading, say, ah, and you will tell a monk, 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 and if the Holy Ghost should bring answer to exam, it's a sin. Yes. Because it will be, go, it will be going against the word of God. That says, seek and you shall find. He that seeketh, findeth. Everybody is going to walk in the morning. You refuse to go. And they're asking you, what are you doing on your kidney? He will give his angels charge over me. Mutin round and get him in jail. Oh, whoa! What to she? I'm telling you. What to she like to you? Can one, in fact, one my bad cat will cat will learn. Because even the scripture says, even my father walk it up till now. He taught to me myself. I walk. Doesn't it bother you that you see that Boko Haram's and uh, all these terrorists enters? churches and begin to kill people. I mean, doesn't it bother you? It bothers. And some people will say, if, to say the, if, the past, if the power of God is real, why should they enter church and kill? Why we Listen, it is not God's responsibility to secure you. It is his responsibility to protect. You take care of the security, then he will now protect you. Do your part, he will do his part. If I'm to pastor a church in the north, hear me. If it is possible for us to build a police station beside the church and sponsor it, we will do it. So that time one more, nobody can and one more, not see one. People are missing it. See, I hear now. Or is my Bible different from your own? He said, when you ask according to his will, show us again that John chapter 5 is verse 14. He said, and this is the confidence that we have. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hear it all. It must be according to his will. It must be according to his will. And what is God's will? God's will is God's word. That's why the more of the word of God you understand, the more of his will you understand. We that understand his will, the way we pray is different. It's different from the way other People that just go to church. Pray. Go to the mountains. Go and hear different kind of prayers. Ah, go pray at me and they be repair. Show them that we live by. Allah no to my big book boy, why me? Who see what Allah no here? To my big book boy, to my big book boy, why me? Who see what Allah no here? To my big book boy, why me? Check it over every chair. How they die, come back, bang, bang, bang. Oh, God, I need to go to bang. To bang, 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 That's why you don't get people like that. Yes, all of them are alone in certain areas. I hope you are not angry. But it's the truth. So, the asking is not the prayer that is important to. But what is important is it according to his will? So, a few brothers who are praying, Lord, I'm trusting you. Bless me with a good wife. Good prayer. A wife that has good job. Good prayer. A wife that is caring. Good prayer. A wife that, oh God, I myself will say I married an angel. Good prayer. But listen, God will not give you what you don't deserve. I don't think you had me. 
If you are asking for an angel, you must be an angel too. If you are asking for an hardworking wife, you must be a hardworking man too. If you are asking for a caring wife, you must be a caring man too. So that if God, if God should give you an angel when you are a man, you will corrupt the angel. <laughs> so it must be according to his will. I'm showing you the reason why several prayers are not being answered. One of my pastor friends, you know, uh, uh, his wife was pregnant. He went to register in a hospital. Then he got there. The wife was laboring, sir. The woman was laboring. The doctors did their best, but they said as her, 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 as the service didn't open. Her pelvic is very small. So they told pastor, pastor, your wife's pelvic is very small. We need to just operate this woman to bring out this uh, uh, baby. He said, God didn't tell me anything about operation. Operation is not by blicker. Operation no ni. One day you egula tegbe, she magic no visioni. Bibeli ni uluwa yon si dit pada. Lo and behold, the baby died. And it was operation they used to bring the baby out. So operation too very she. Ni ba tomo wa lai. Ni ba tomo kuto ni kusiba jima jipa so she ka fisile. Omo uja deo. What do we do? There's no problem. Operate the the my wife the house wife and bring out the baby. Can you imagine ignorance and? When you, are, you ask the pastor, pastor will say, I prayed for my wife to deliver. She, God didn't answer me. God only answers prayers when it's according to his will. And what did I call his will? The word. That's why. Keep studying the word of God so that you can keep improving in the knowledge of his will. We had testimony. It was by uh, the late uh, 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 Apostle Obadari that shared it. Auntie Soji Kambo. Mobile Kutan Noko. Ibita Siwa. Kusiba she lived daily. Musik Badua. Pi Musik Badua ton. Musafun driver ton to ambe. Bubu yama tosinu oko ye. Bubu wande tosinu. Ibitu ye kek poa. Wande start in moto. Uwa wande leo. But I had a boru mili kunyemo. Kenny can what is when you lua? You will not shake your bad dairy. Along, with any key will be your lotus in the model. Me by God, hear me at times, does some things circumstantially because of circumstance. It does not mean that He will do it always. Am I communicating? The third discovery I had, I made. The third thing I discovered. So don't forget what's number two. I discovered that God in Christ Jesus, I have the right to ask for things how? According to his will. Number three. I discovered that in Christ Jesus, I have power over the devil and his, and his entire host. I have power. So many of you don't know. That's why you are afraid of witches. That's why you are afraid of, of wizards. First John chapter 4 verse 4. I want to show you. I have power. Tell your neighbor, I have power. Now, if you are born again like me, Neil, if you are not born again, you are just going to church, you don't have anything. But first John chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, my dear children, you come from God and belong to God. You have already won a big victory. Over those false teachers. For the spirit in you is far stronger. This message Bible. Than anything in the world. Show me the King James Version. Thank you. He said, ye are children of God. Ye are children of God. Little children. And have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, who is in you that is greater? Is the Holy Ghost. 
the spirit of God in you has made you greater than witches and wizards. Most of want to shawari to change mindset in me. To share easy for me to be able to do temptation. I discovered this. Yes, that I have a spirit in me that is greater than the spirit in the world. All the ones that the abalis trust upon, the one in me is greater. See yourself that way. Greater is he that is in you. Now, if you see yourself this way, can I tell you this truth? This one that a bird will fly at night and give a sound, you are afraid. Somebody sends a threat message, you are afraid. It's because you don't know who is in you. Jesus is in me. The Holy Ghost is in me. God the Father is in me. I am stronger than the devil. Tell your neighbor I'm stronger than the devil. You are not talking like you know it. Shout it aloud. One more time. I am stronger than the devil. Now this was my third discovery about myself. I am stronger than the devil and his entire house. That no matter how hard they try to want to attack me, I am still superior than them. That's the understanding I have. And that's one thing every Christian in our time should have. You are stronger than the devil. Understand this very well. Whether somebody plants something in their shop, wet something in their shop, you just believe that you don't need to plant anything. All you just need to do is to speak the word. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever weapon formed or fashioned against me fails now. I remember one time ago, though I've stopped doing that now, because God said I should stop it. Before I was specialized in going to help people carry out charms. You know, I started a young Igbo man, rented a shop at Okebola, big shop. And as he was about opening uh, the shop, he saw a big hole in front of his shop. He was shocked. So they started digging. As they, they dug it, you know what they found? They found a very big pot. Different kind of things inside. They were not afraid. Who will help us? Who will help us? They were talking at seven day Okebola when one of our ministers had. You don't have pastor. They said his pastor. This one said, my pastor cannot come. If you don't have I've called my pastor. My pastor cannot come. He now came forward and said, I have a pastor that can come. So he now called me. As he called me, sir, they saw so and so in this shop. I said, where? He said, Liberty. The first thing I did, listen, because you can be fighting a battle even when you have power outside the will of God, you will lose. Lord, should I go? That's what things so many Christians don't do. <laughs> Imagine I gave most of scripture in one last week. If I think yes, we did the old one life somewhere, made a low and time on see. Because let me tell you another one. Do you know that that same beautiful gate, that same beautiful gate, where Jesus used to go and preach in the Bible, that cripple man was there. In the days of Jesus, Jesus didn't heal him. It was a miracle that was left for Peter. God cannot send you to everybody. If you understand that, eh, you will not fight the battle that will put you in trouble. Am robbers came to our area. They robbed the Mogono. They robbed the Nalaka. As they got to our estate gate, our security men came out, cocked with guns. The 20 men robbers said, at the boundary here. Ah, the boundary. We, didn't, we have not come to a boundary. 
teba kuru mi tewa tewa bawa aba inja o otawa o ni debita inwa our security men said when they had it they turned back straight they had weapons to fight but those people have said we have not come to you you don't know that spiritually there are laws that's why the bible says lay not your hand suddenly on any man so that you can so that you will not partake of his sin that yes i know that the spirit of god in me is greater than every other spirit god didn't send me to everybody am i communicating so i asked the lord lord do i go god said go ahead i got there prayed on it brought out the calabash very big pot from that shop and destroyed it that man is still doing his business in that shop till tomorrow If you are born again, say I'm born again. The spirit of God in me is greater than the spirit in the world. My fourth discovery. Number four. I discovered that in Christ Jesus, I am not alone. Legions of angels are watching over me. Beloved, it is important you pay close attention to the promise of God for, you, for your life in John chapter 14 and verse 18. If you are born again, you should understand this. You are not alone. John 14, 18. I'm not alone. You are of God, little children. First John, sorry. Oh, where am I? John, I was in the next one. I will not leave you comfortless. How? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I won't leave you comfortless. You are not alone. Every child of God should understand. You are not alone. That's why you should not be afraid. Angels are watching over you. Do you think they have not tried to kill you? They have tried. But they couldn't kill you. I've shared this experience with you before. We finished service one day. Our church was still at Adeniji that time. I didn't know people were coming to greet me. Pastor, 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 and a, a, a brother, he's of blessed memory now, came and hugged me, pastor, and left. A week after, I got to my office. I saw him, he came in, and he was crying. You know what I saw that shocked me? There was chicken paws from his head down to his feet, covered with paws. Brother, what happened? He said, pastor, I'm sorry. Pastor, I'm sorry. Pastor, I'm sorry. When I tested a charm on you last week Sunday, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't I I I I if you are born again, you are not alone. Angels are watching over you. Say, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I can hear you clearly. Shout it aloud very well. Beloved, these scriptural truths are the reasons for the courage I have over the devil and his host. Imagine how Job, how Job, sorry, how Job was quick to accept every disaster that befell him as the will of God for his life. You know, that was the problem of Job. Job, 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 Job. Job. Ah, I'm on, I'm on, I want to do cover, want to cook Ah, ah, yes, sir. I want to eat, I want to eat, I want to when Job stood up, what did he do? He said, Naked, I came from my mother's womb. Naked shall I return. I pray for somebody. Listen to me today. Every attempt of darkness to make you naked. I command it to fail. In the name of Jesus. You must not be quick. To accept the negative as the will of God for your life. 
You know why I showed you these four things? You are God's child. You are a son. Don't be quick to accept the negative as the will of God. You can still pray against it. How will you buy land? Somebody take your land and the next thing you come before the Lord, where is it? Will you alone at your corner? At your mobile to that? Well, more for land, what to buy? Far can you later in lower? Wag badwa. Lay into bag badwa. Wag big be said. To buy man, your is become lock out. Lock out. Fight for what you have. But Job was quick to accept. Are you learning something? When people like Ezekiah, imagine, when people like Ezekiah, the Shunammite woman, and Hannah did not accept the negative as their Lord, Job accepted it. Is it not the same Old Testament? Uh-uh. Imagine, that of Ezekiah, the prophet came. It was the servant of God that came. God said, I should tell you, prepare your house, you are going to die. Sickness, you, know, you won't recover. And the man did not talk to the prophet of God. He turned to the wall and said, oh Lord, Remember, remember, is this how I'm going to end like this? Remember my, my good works. And God said to Isaiah, Isaiah has not gotten to the entrance. Isaiah, go back and tell him that I've changed it. If he had accepted like Job, what would have happened? He would have died. Some of you have that let's go spirit. You allow things to go easily. I talk about the second one, the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman, her son died. Oh my God. But the woman didn't agree. He said, no. Ah, no. My son cannot die. He laid the dead body on the, on the, on the bed of the man of God. Laid the dead body on the bed of the man of God. I went to the, see the man of God. And the man of God came to pray and gave him back the son. What about Hannah? Hannah didn't agree that she would die without a son, without a child. She went to the altar. She went to the altar. Because some of you are quick to agree. Now, one of us was sharing with me. I don't want to mention her name. She said, She came, we were just praying. I said, Papa, I don't know why. 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 And we started talking. I don't know why. 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 Not knowing that I know somebody that knows the landlord. He doesn't live in the country. We sent a message to him outside the country. When the person that sent that gave me the number linked us, they thought that she's my mom. And the only one came below and how far. Money wants any cousin who live on my father. She mommy in Shon she won't be money one day. Oh, the mommy to be the only belly. Ah, so we belly mom mommy be bed in bed. You are a child of God. My baby or more long here. I had one testimony, no, one experience yesterday. Who did do me? Munisu got to pine in So when you talk about your kid, you're quarreling. You're quarreling. You're quarreling. You're talking about one way or another. I want to rub you one more time. Yeah, what kind of stroke? Stroke here. Look, I want a year after. Yeah, by the time stroke, don't you go? When you go to be two hours, I blow one day. When I look, I blow one. When I look, I blow one. But I want your kid to keep on quarreling. Say, I'm a child of God. God is with me. Angels are watching over me. God is my father. He will not tempt me with evil. Please, are you catching understanding at all? 
I want to summarize because of my time. We have one Thanksgiving more. Hallelujah. Beloved, it is important that you should understand the art of warfare properly so that the devil will not rob you of good things physically and eventually put a wrong suggestion to you to make you believe that God is tempting you. God will never test his children with evil. That's the summary of my teaching this morning. Don't ever get to that point. You know, say, eh, 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 that sack letter. It may be God. Maybe because God wants me to do evangelism. It's a lie. Because evangelism told you, she told you, but she told you. Oh, But only one sack can be sure what love about can be. I want to know what happened to Shambi Linko. It was not only that, but my wife. Don't accept the negative as God's will. He's your father. He won't tempt you with it. That's why if you get a dream that any negative thing wants to happen, don't accept it. You stand up. No, no, no. I cannot lose my son. I cannot lose my daughter. I cannot lose my husband. I cannot lose my wife. He cannot be God tempting me with it. Next week, we are going to look at this. Why then do people fall easily to temptation? That will be for next week. But today, take that and register it in your heart. God cannot tempt you with evil. You cannot park your machine outside. They steal it. They want to now encourage you. that, ah, Brother, brother, oh, you alone. We are Kada and she saw no. Ah, Mobia, she could yak a motor alone if you rock where you're on. If you want to security to your cool, she saw our Kada, who the park is if it's your Jumati too. Did you, did you get me? Yes, but what did you generate or church you are laying? Alone will tempt you. Ah, call it from Jane. Foolishness about the account, be less in the same coolie, and it has been there for over one year. More can you continue there? No, we are. How many you need to kinney? Could I want a bow? What about below? Oh, no, she can't go to a tag, but along with that, along with B. Boy, but I'm a Rami Kilashi, a cock or coy leaf, a secure dada. God cannot tempt you with evil. That's why I see. Okay, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Oh, yeah, stand up. Oh, we have Thanksgiving, Abby. Sit down. Sorry, I'm sorry. God is your father. You are his children. He has glorious plans for you. But make sure you do your part so that he can also do his part. Put your hands together for Jesus if you are blessed.